A very good morning to all. I'm Ri Bing, the moderator of today's panel discussion on the multiple pathway to success. For my real job, I'm a, I work as a clinical psychologist at the Institute of Mental Health. I'm also a member of the MOE Compass. Compass stands for Community and Parents in Support of Schools. In Compass, we have formed different action groups to look into different aspects of our students' well-being. The action group that I'm in seeks to widen the parents' perspectives on the definition of success for their children with the hope that our youth can eventually grow up to lead successful and meaningful life regardless of their academic achievements. As a parent of three teenagers, I'm sure the audience is as interested as me in hearing the views and stories of our panelists on the multiple pathways to success. For today's panel's discussion, we are very privileged to have a mother-daughter pair to share with us their story and journey. So without further ado, may I invite the panelists to introduce themselves, please. Hi, everyone. I'm Sangeeta. I'm Preeti's mom. I'm working for the judiciary and I'm working for the family justice court. And um, I'm a union official as well. And I'm from the grassroots as well. Thank you. Hi, I'm Preeti. I'm in my final year of pursuing my diploma in oral health therapy. So before becoming an NYP student, uh, I was from ITE. So I studied various courses before coming here. So some of the courses that I did was um, NITEC in animation, and NITEC in design animation, NITEC in business services, and higher NITEC in biotech. So apart from my um, academic life, uh, on the side, I do a volunteering. Uh, so I volunteer for organizations such as Singapore Muscular Dystrophy Association, Singapore Cancer Society, and uh, Sengkang General Hospital. So I volunteer in the wards where I serve um, the elderly foods, you know, and befriend the elderly um, within the wards itself. So apart from volunteering, uh, I also do fencing on the sites as a sport. Yeah, thank you. Hi everyone, I am Jun Hao. I was from the Nyan Polytechnic Biomedical Engineering course. So just a fun fact, I actually graduated a month ago. So yeah, if I were to describe myself and my personal hobbies, uh, I would say my personal hobbies would include volunteering and leadership. So I actively serve at the Nisun South Youth Network. And back then when I was in NYP, I actually served as the head of welfare of the NYP service learning group. So on top of that, uh, in terms of leadership, I was actually given the privilege to have served as the School of Engineering Club president for two consecutive years. So, yeah, I'm so thankful to be here today. And uh, I can't wait to, to share with you all more about my polytechnic journey. So, since today's, path, uh, since today's session is about multiple pathways, I would just love to share with all of you my secondary school and my background. So, I was from St. Andrew's Secondary School. And the reason why I came to Poly is because of the hands-on learning and really the cumulative system where, you know, every semester would count towards your GPA. Yeah, so thank you. Okay, thank you for the introduction, panelists. Uh, it's really great to hear that uh, our youth at this very young age, their CV is probably better than ours, right? Uh, so, okay, so since today's uh, panel discussion is on the multiple pathways to success, right? Uh, let's start off with a very fundamental question. Uh, what does success mean to you? Uh, perhaps we can start with uh, Jin Hao first. Uh, how would you define success for yourself? Okay, so before I, I define success for me, I would just like to share that you know everyone has different definitions of success. So for me, I follow a framework called Ikigai. So it's spelled I-K-I-G-A-I. -I -I. So it's actually a framework that the Japanese people use to actually define a fulfilling and a, you know, a joyful life. So Ikigai in English stands for a reason for being. So it follows four very main key points, mission, profession, passion, and vocation. So I think I hold very dearly to these four very core values, which you know, kind of defines what is success to me through you know, really gaining joy from doing the things that I love. Okay, so for me, um I have come a long way in my academic journey, uh, right? So I think 
something that defines success to me will be being adaptable and um, carrying all these technical skills, carrying these soft skills throughout my life and even you know, I, after I enter the workforce. So one story that I would like to share is uh, since I studied night tech in design animation and now I'm in oral health therapy. So one example is um, with the skills that I've acquired, the animation skills that I've acquired in my course, uh, I have applied it into oral health therapy. So how I do it is I create an animation to promote oral health. So uh, this is one uh, of the story that, um, you know, uh, since I learned animation, right, and he has stayed with me and he will stay with me throughout my life. So that is being successful uh, to me. Not letting go of the technical skills that you have learned throughout your course of study. Hi. Uh, for me, success is happiness. When you in a workforce, you have to be happy. Wherever you are, you need to be happy and you can complete the task. Once you complete the task, you will reach the goal. Thank you. So what I'm hearing from the panelists is that uh, for you guys, uh, the definition of success is actually very holistic. It's not just about good grades or good pay, high pay, salary and so forth, uh, but being the best version of yourself, right? Uh, also looking into the meaning and purpose of life and, and making full use uh, of the skills that you've acquired in the service of others. Okay, so that's truly inspiring. So actually before uh, today's panel discussion, we have actually gathered some questions from our audience. Okay, so one of the questions from the audience is uh, actually what are some of the skills that our youth needs uh, to help them prepare for work life or for the workforce? Uh, perhaps we can get the panelists with the most work experience to share with us first. Okay, uh, first of all, you need to um, take some courses if you need to, okay? Uh, if not, you need to gain some experience, okay? And um, in order to join the workforce, you need to be confident in yourself, okay? You need to face, face with confidence. If you face with confidence, you will be able to learn more things, okay? As you move on in life, you need to have experience. At the same time, you learn new things. When you learn new things, you will achieve your goals. Thank you. Okay, so I think um, for myself, uh, throughout my life, I think I've worked multiple part-time jobs. And um, one thing that I think the skills that we really need is, of course, to be adaptable, to communicate, having a very strong interpersonal skills, you know, how you communicate with your boss, your colleagues, build that, you know, foster that relationship within the company and also uh, resilience. Resilience is, I think, very, very important. You know, when life hits you with an obstacle, how you get up back on your feet and how you carry yourself every day to work. I think um, that is the very important skill now, given that everything is so fast-paced, everything is so stressful now, right? Yeah, so for me, that's, yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, I feel that, you know, in a very fast-paced technolo technological society, um, definitely some of the skills that, you know, we need. I think I would like to give more in a um, STEM perspective because I do engineering. So I, I would say that the skills that um, really require, an uh, engineer really require is versatility. So really being able to adapt to different situations. So it could be, for example, where you know where I worked in a hospital before, where you know there are sudden situations that you need to adapt to this issue quickly so that you can solve it as soon as possible. So the next thing I think is very important is um, uh, close to that also it's problem solving and critical thinking. So you really need to be critical critical thinking when you make decisive decisions. And I think. Is it is a very important skill that we use has to have to foster in order to really upskill ourselves in this really growing technological world, uh, Yeah. So basically, thinking on your feet, la. Okay. Yeah. All right. So so basically, the three C's, la, Right. Confidence, communication, and critical thinking, mm -hmm. uh, as well as of course your very uh, technical skills like problem solving skills and, and and so forth. But I do also hear a lot about uh, emphasis on soft skills as well. Uh, resilience, how do you deal with setbacks and, and, and so forth. Right. Okay, thank you very much, uh, panelists. Uh, so uh, we have touched a bit uh, on the different definition of success and perhaps also some ingredients that can help us uh, at least prepare for a successful uh, life after school. 
Um, so uh, we do have a question uh, from a youth who actually shared that uh, he couldn't enter into uh, university uh, but doesn't feel ready to enter the workforce yet. Uh, what would your advice uh, be for him? Uh, okay. Um, for me, right, um, you, if you're not ready, okay, if you're not ready to go into the workforce, take some courses which you are happy to do it. The most important is happy. If you're happy to do the course, definitely when you join the workforce, you are prepared. You are prepared to go through the workforce, to learn more. In order to learn more, definitely you will uh, reach your goals. Yeah. So uh, the experience is very important before you go through the workforce. You can work as part-time, you can work as full-time, you can work ad hoc. So to gain the experience before you go to the full-time workforce. I think uh, to add on to what my uh, mom said, I think curiosity is, is being curious la, is very important. But um, I think for me, uh, I'll give it as a girl's perspective. Chin Hao will give it as a, from a guy perspective. So uh, I think for me is to just go, just put your feet into the deep water and just go. Because if you don't uh, experience, right, you don't put your feet into the deep water and just go, you 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 will lose out. La. So I think to start off, for my industry actually, um, the best is to work with the government agency first before you go into private companies, private sectors. So government agencies are more more safer in that sense, right? Before you, you know, put your feet into uh, private practice. So yeah, get some experience from the government companies first and then uh, slowly build your way. And once you're ready, you want to further your studies in the universities and then you can go ahead. Yeah, because it's also very expensive, the university's fees. Yeah, so... Okay, so on behalf of the public service sector, I thank you for <laughs> endorsing <welcome>. us as, <laughs> as the employer of choice. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so now from a guy's perspective, because, you know, after poly, after junior college, it will be NS for us. So we'll be enlisting for two years in national service. So I, I feel that during this time, it's really the time to really do more research on what you're interested in. So be it, if let's say you want to further studies, definitely go to the university, like the websites, to actually research on the courses that you're interested in. So if you're not sure what the course is about, you can take a deeper dive into the different modules that they offer. And actually from understanding the modules, you would actually understand better what the course offers. And also looking at career prospects as to what this course offers, you know, for example, biomedical engineer we have, we will be able to work in compliance sector and also, you know, biomedical engineering design. So, you know, knowing what I'll do in the future would be more promising for me. Lah. So, I think if let's say, if you got free time also, uh, take on internships, you might not know what you're interested in. So, really just asking yourself, hey, like, why not go for a three months internship at this company? It would definitely be an eye opener and you know, who knows, maybe you might just like the industry. I think um, the best one is uh, to attend the open house. I think universities have various open houses towards the end of the year. So, so I think uh, that will give a better insight to, to what the courses are offered being by the university itself. Yeah, so you don't want to spend your five years studying or four years studying that particular degree and not working what you have studied. So that will be a really waste of time and waste of money. Yeah. So to be sure of what you want to do. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm hearing is that uh, really the advice for this youth is just do it, right? Just try out something, right? But of course you do your background checks first like, or research first, right? Uh, seeing what actually best, best fits your interests. But I'd, I'd, after that, really just go and try something, be it internship, be it part-time job or time job or so forth. Right, so uh, I understand that uh, Pretty and uh, Chin Hao, you guys have slightly different academic journeys into polytechnic, right? Uh, uh, for Pretty, you actually graduated from ITE before moving on to uh, polytechnic, and for Chin Hao, it's really after your O levels, right? Right. Uh, so uh, I'm just wondering, what are some of the considerations that you had uh, when you were making your post-secondary school choices? I think for me, um, one thing that I look at is uh, distance. Whether the school is 
nearer to home or not, right? You don't want to uh, study somewhere that is very far. Actually, when I was um, choosing my course of study, like which polytechnic uh, I want to go after ITE, I actually look at um, Nian Poly, which is in Clementi, and I stay in Haugang. So um, I think distance is a factor. Like you don't want to study somewhere so far and then you know you end up waking, having to wake up so early, travelling to school and stuff like that. So um, distance is one. Another one would be uh, basically what you're interested in. If you're interested in you know something to deal with people, like for me, I, I, I like to talk to people. I like to deal with uh, lives, basically. So uh, that's why I go into, I start to venture into uh, oral health therapy. That's the closest I can get to being, uh, you know, helping people, making an impact. Yeah, so. Okay, for me, um, how I actually decided on whether to go polytechnic or junior college, you know, I would ask myself questions, you know, questions like, oh, um, would I stand an equal chance if I were to go polytechnic over junior college? So these are of things, you know, I would think about. And, you know, even back then, I was already um, quite sure that I would want to do something related to engineering. So I didn't exactly know what I wanted to do, but I knew that I was strong in my maths and physics. That's why I... Um, and and also from my from my dad, he also does engineering. And, uh, you know, I can see that, like, my interest is also... It also lies there. So, you know, questions also like, um, you know, am I able to, if let's say, go to poly, would I be able to adapt to this new learning? Because we know le um, in terms of learning, junior college and polytechnic, they offer very, very different types of learning. So for polytechnic, we have something more hands-on, something where we use practical knowledge, something that involves internships, final year projects, this type of things. Am I ready for that? And um, for junior college, it's something definitely more fast-paced, some, something more academically inclined. And, you know, I felt that for me, I preferred something more towards poly because um, uh, essentially, I didn't want to go through uh, the O-level kind of route again because uh, I didn't want that one exam to be my final say. Like how, like, you know, at the end of the... Uh, for example, in O-levels, right, at the end of the four years, I had to, you know, my grades was just determined by that final exam. So I didn't like that system. I preferred something more of a cumulative add-up where, you know, every semester, it would just add up to, to my final GPA. And it just gives me that sense of security that, hey, like, one screw-up will not mean my whole life is screwed up for that certain grade. Yeah. So, yeah, that was why I decided I chose um, to choose poly over junior college. I think me and Chin Hao are more very hands-on. We, yeah, we like internships. <laughs> Especially in engineering where really it's about labs, about internships, and really um, really be out in the industry to meet industry partners. I think that's something that I really enjoy. And uh, I come from a, from a family where um, we talk a lot. Lah. So uh, I love just the interpersonal relationships Communicating and with communications. Yeah, yeah, same exactly. for me as well. A lot of clinical work, right? Yeah. Okay. Let me just share um, with all of you that uh, for Pretty, she's uh, quite unique. She chose the courses, okay? She chose the courses. Then she asked me, um, should I go for this? Should I go for that? Okay. Then I say, just go for it. What you are happy, just go. Just do it. Don't worry. So I don't stress her much, okay? So she just chose, okay, I go for this first. Not happy? Go for another one, okay? There's, uh, there's no ending in, uh, learning, in learning anything you want. So choose what you're happy with, go. If cannot, okay, never mind, just go for the second one. Not, cannot do it, but at least you manage to learn the basic information. Then you move on. When you move on, it's like you gain the knowledge. Gain the knowledge, then you can, it's comfortably you can fit into the workforce. I think one thing that the, um, Singapore has emphasised so much on is lifelong learning. Yeah, so you never stop learning. Yeah, so just as long as it, you know, as long as you are learning, you are putting in the effort to make yourself a better person. I think you will go a long way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I, I suppose what I'm hearing is that some of the considerations that you have, besides very practical ones like distance, is really what is your what are your interests and passion. And what type of curriculum and what type of academic structure actually suits 
your own learning styles and, and, and so forth. And I, I, I think Madam Sankita has actually already validated that approach, right? I mean, uh, for her, she feels like, oh, really, I, I just need to support my daughter uh, in her own journey, in her own decision-making and, and so forth. Uh, this leads actually very nicely to uh, another question from our audience. Uh, basically, I suppose this comes from a parent. Uh, so uh, the parent is wondering uh, how best to uh, support their child in their academic and uh, career interests. Uh, perhaps, Madam Sankita, you've touched on a, a bit about that uh, just now, mm -hmm. but can you share with us a bit more? Uh, how do you start that conversation with Preeti? And what are some of the considerations that, that you had uh, when you are discussing uh, with her about her career and academic interests? Okay, uh, the most important is the love, care and concern towards the child. Okay, so we try not to stress the child too much, even though... Um, she don't make it like get a low marks or whatever. Don't demoralize. Um, what I will do is, it's okay. There's, there's another chance for you to make a better result. It's okay. Don't worry about you. Uh, don't worry about that, okay? So just uh, concentrate on what you are doing. Um, just um, show concern. Like, um, say, how, how are you doing it? Are you okay? Yeah. Just concentrate on them. Don't stress that. Don't stress them up. Uh, maybe probably uh, just ask them to okay, go and take a short nap. You know, uh, okay, leave your homework aside. Just go and rest. You know, those those kind of follow ups. Okay, when you have uh, those kind of follow ups, I think the child will be happy. Okay, when the child is happy, you leave them alone for a while. But of course, you monitor them from a distance. Yeah. So when you monitor them from distance. At least you know what they are doing and uh, with the actions at home, you will know that they are better in something else. Yeah. So from there, you follow through. I'm sure your child will go along the good way and the right path. Yeah. Okay. So it sounds like a very child-centered and child-led approach, yes. right? Okay, I'm going to put Pretty in the spot here. Uh, I'm just going to get you to share with us, uh, what is your experience when your mom is going through this with, with you? Mm, I think one thing that she keeps telling me is not the end of the world. This one line. Any, anything I do, so if I if I don't make it, it's not the end of the world. Just try again. Yeah, it's okay one. Yeah, so so uh, I think some of the ways that she has supported me throughout um, my academic journey is, um, okay, one story that I will share is uh, I started animation, right? So after animation, I did business and then I did science. So that gap where before I started biotech, which is science, I, I had a challenge. So I never touched science for uh, about four years. Four years, I think. Yeah. So I think when I got into ITE biotech, uh, I struggled. I struggled a lot because I... I Forgot my basic sciences, you know. I don't know what's chemistry. I don't know. I don't know bio. I don't know anything. So I think one way my mom supported me was um, to go and look for tuition teachers who can who can you know add back the foundation to me. You know that's how I keep up with my class. And in ITE, um, I think I was the top student in my course. Yeah, I managed to clinch the top graduate award. Yeah, I think if if it's not for my mother, I think I won't make it. I won't be here lah. And also, I won't even get the NYP scholarship. Yeah, so I think this is one way that she has supported me. On top of that, that she she has also emphasized so much on mindfulness, you know, um, to take breaks whenever you need and don't don't force yourself. If you cannot study, don't study. Go and take a break. It's okay. Yeah, I think this is one thing that she has emphasized so much at home and how she has helped me throughout this this journey and and to where I am now. So besides the practical support, really, is also the emotional support. Yeah, that's right. right. Okay, so uh, Jin Hao feels a bit lonely there because <laughs> they're yeah. not here. Okay, share with us your experience with your parents. I would just love to say that my mom is just right there so <laughs> in the audience. So yeah, um, I think similar to Preeti, uh, I really had a very supportive family in terms of my academic endeavours. So I... You know, you know, simple gestures like uh, my mom would say like, oh, how's your day? Um, have you eaten dinner? These are of things that you feel like um, are insignificant moments. Actually, when it adds up, it, it really value adds to, you know, creating that bond between um, 
me and my mom and also me and my dad. So I really feel that, you know, having that openness to, to talk to your child is very, very important. And also, you know, you know, sometimes, you know, us youths, we tend to have an angry face, like, oh, we don't want to start a conversation. But, you know, at times we really need that, that you know, that sense of comfort from our parents. And, and that is really what um, my mom does. And she would always ask me whether I'm doing fine when during my, when I'm like struggling with my exams or when I'm really just mugging my work and everything. So she would always be there for me. Uh, it might not, sometimes it might not be in an emotional support. She would just buy me food, buy me McDonald's, buy me grab food. These sort of things are very, you know, at that moment you won't think like, oh, it's so big. But after your exams, you'll be like, oh, yeah, actually mommy did this for me. And I'm really appreciative for that. So, uh, yeah, so actually my, my whole family uh, openness to, you know, really starting conversations and checking up on, on my, how say, on my well well being is has really brought me a long way to really achieve academic excellence. Uh, recently, I was awarded the Lee Kuan Yew Maths and Science Award as well as the Nian Kong Si Award. So yeah, I'm so thankful for my mom and for my dad for you know, uh, for you know being with me through this academic journey. Yeah, thank you. So so what I'm hearing is that uh, for parents, perhaps it's not to focus too much on the results, but focus on the well being of the child. And the results will eventually come. Uh, I suppose another encouragement for parents, right? We do know that for teenagers, okay, most of them have a default black face, right? So if you try to communicate with them and they don't really want to engage, just persist, right? Uh, if not, provide the practical uh, supports for them, food and, and so forth. They will appreciate that as well, okay? Right? So... Um, so for, I think for the two of you, the situation is uh, you guys are quite clear what you want to do, what are your interests and, and, and so forth. Uh, but I think for a lot of teenagers right, or a lot of students, uh, they may not be sure about their own interests yet. right? So And they may be at the crossroad like, oh, do I choose uh, JC or Polly and, and so forth. Uh, maybe we start with Madam Sankita first. Like, as a parent, uh, how would you help that child to assess which is a better option uh, for him or her. Okay, since uh, for Preeti, right, she comes from ITE. So, uh, I'll tell her, go slow. Don't have to move into a fast pace. Okay? Um, you need to uh, gain the knowledge first. So, choose what you are happy with. Uh, don't jump into conclusion. If you think A, then go for A. If you think it's B, go for B. Slow and steady, I guess it will work. Yeah. I think the best thing is not to compare yourself with others. I am, I am 25, right, and I'm still in poly, right. People uh, my age are now pursuing their degree, even working or even getting married. So I think it's hard not to compare. But I think the best thing is not to compare yourself to people around you, lah. Just focus on your own journey. You know, people say, oh, why are you still in poly? You're still old. so old you're still in poly. I think, don't, don't get that into your head. Just focus on your, 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 yourself. Yeah, don't get distracted by things around you. Lah. I think that is one biggest advice if I were to give anyone out there who doesn't know what to do and start to compare themselves. Yeah, my friend know what to do, but I don't know. Don't care. Just do. <laughs> yeah, the more you compare, the more stressed you'll be and then you'll start making wrong decisions and you you know you spend money taking up this cause you're like ah, this is not what I want you know yeah so don't compare all right yeah so I think one of the advice that I would give is definitely to start early you know it's never too early to start so uh, that that being said you know in sec 3 sec 4 it's not too early to start thinking about what you want to do in the future and whether you want to go JC or poly uh, you know if let's say uh if there's any uh, secondary school students here, let's say you are not sure of what to do, uh, you can ask your parents, ask your seniors exactly, you know, what are the differences between these two options? I think it's very important for us to know because we'll be spending the next two to three years of our lives uh, in that school. So I strongly believe that if you, if you have time, start early, do some research as to what course you're interested in. It can be in the engineering field, business, IT, media even. So these sort of things 
um, I would say, you know, Polly really gives us the, the freedom to really choose what we want to do. And, you know, what we do in Polly might not dictate what we do in the future. So use this time to really try out new things and to really explore the different options that are offered. Basically find your strengths and weakness. Lah. Yeah. Okay, so I suppose the important thing is also to know what you're really interested in and go and do some research and find out from people. Uh, and I really want to echo a point uh, from Pretty, right? Uh, this is also what my Inchik taught me when I was in NS, right? He told us, don't compare, <laughs> right? So know what you want, right? And, and of course, discuss with your peers and with your families, but let not other people's choices uh, be also affecting your own choice, okay? So that's, that's very nice. Uh, Tom has really caught up with us. It has been a very interesting uh, conversation. Uh, so uh, as a final question uh, to end our panel discussion today, right? So if you can turn back the clock, okay, how would you or what would you advise your younger self uh, while you were making uh, your decisions about post-secondary school uh, options a few years ago? Uh, what's Okay, if I were to go four years ago, when I was still in St. Andrew's Secondary School, I would say that, you know, I wouldn't have changed anything. Uh, I would have def definitely chose poly. And also, you know, I look at things such as distance, as, uh, you know, making new friends, new environments. So uh, I really love that. Uh, I really love how poly functioned and uh, how the whole system of uh, having a very vibrant and inclusive, um, like, school it is. I mean, in Nyang Poly, we always preach that, you know, it's not just about academic excellence. It's also more, it's more than that. It is also about joining CCAs, um, doing things that you love. So, you know, I really love the fact that uh, I went to Nyang Poly and was given the privilege to have served as the president. I was able to actually lead the freshman orientation and also lead events like the open houses and camps for the school. So, um, if I were to turn back the clock, I would say, Chin Hao, you did it. No regrets. Keep moving forward. Yeah. I think for me, uh, if I were to turn back time, same, same as Chin Hao, I will not change anything. I think if it's not for ITE, for IT's education, I think I won't be where I am today. I won't have, you know, acquired the skills, the animation skills, the business skills, you know, how I dress, how I talk to people, how I carry myself. I think all these IT has really helped me and shaped me into the person I am today. And if it's not for that education system, I think I won't be where I am now. Yeah. So I will not change anything. I will still go and study animation. Business, biotech, and then now RF therapy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. From the parents' points of view, right, I feel that um, we shouldn't stress our child. Okay. If you are move, okay, we are talking about moving backward, right? Okay. So when they come back from school, they are only primary school. We don't want to stress them that, have you done your homework? Have you studied? Or whatever, okay? They are primary school. Even though if it's secondary school, we just like for pretty, I just leave leave her alone. But of course, I'm I'm looking from the back and monitor her from the from a distance and um, make sure she's on the right path. So uh, we I we don't want to stress the child too much. Uh, study homework, study homework. We give them play time, play time, rest time, relax time. Bring them out and not too much on concentration on the study part because once um, you leave them alone, it will flow. It will flow in the right way. Yeah. So we just monitor and become their backbone. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so don't stress them too much, yeah. right? Uh, of course, you want to set uh, certain expectations for them in terms of their efforts. And, and so forth, but really just to be at, at the back, right? Uh, supporting yeah, them, right. and especially yeah. in their teenage years, right? Okay, uh, we have come to the end of uh, today's panel discussion. Uh, I would really like to express my thanks to the panelists for your very candid and uh, insightful sharing, right? Uh, and uh, uh, I, I'm sure the audience, like myself, Okay, has found uh, your sharing and your stories truly inspiring and enlightening. 
Uh, as parents, uh, we all wish that uh, our, well, our children will grow up to lead successful and meaningful life. And it's indeed heartening to hear from our panelists today that in Singapore, our children do have multiple pathways to help them to achieve this. On behalf of the panelists, we wish you a very good day ahead.